Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. Today we're here with iTech AC Power Sourcer. Yeah, they call them AC Power Sources. It's like an AC power supply. It basically replaces a very accurate, like this Volt box I have. I have this BK Precision, which is kind of ironic because I think it's going to take the place of this guy, which is kind of ironic because. Um, in the same brand as that guy, you'll find one of these that looks identical, but it's a little over a thousand dollars more than this one. <laughs> so this is a good price. Now these are expensive. AC power sources, you don't find them in all labs. So yeah, they are a little bit more expensive. This guy is around 1600 bucks, a little more than that, I think. Uh, I don't know, we'll look to see if it's on sale, okay? But very nice. So. Now, a Variac, a nice one like this, they're not cheap either, but, you know, less expensive than this. The advantage with this, other than being digital and all that kind of stuff, is this guy, you can bring up voltage nice and slow like you can with the Variac, but you can also, I mean, with the Variac, I can, you know, move the voltage up and down and play around like that, but it's kind of just up to how I move my hand, you know, it's... It's not a scientific way to do, to change your voltage to see how your power supply reacts. With this, you can have it sweep across a low voltage range and a high voltage range. You can go through several different voltage ranges and sweep back and forth. Um, you can also sweep the frequency. Okay, so for AC power supplies, you might want to go from, say, 47 hertz to 68 hertz. So you can have it sweep through that. You can also have it sweep to that frequency range and the voltage range at the same time. So you can do different kinds of disturbances. Uh, you know, the light dimmers, they can cause problems. And so you can have it put like, kind of like a light dimmer voltage output to see if that's going to affect your product. So there's different kinds of line disturbances you can do with one of these things. It's really cool. Now, the other thing you can do with this is you can set the current limit. With that thing, I just have to wait for a fuse to blow, which I've blown a fuse or two. <laughs> but with this, you can set the current limit to say half an amp, you know, something low, so that in case I'm testing some product, I don't blow up the product if, if there's a problem. Now, maybe there's an inrush current. Well, you can set the peak current on this so that it'll allow a peak current. And so, you can have an RMS current plus a peak current level setting. And then I think it goes to some transient current for one second or something like that. So you can do things like that to help protect your product that you're testing, but still give it a surge current at the same time, maintaining that low RMS current. So that if it, if it's putting out a current for longer than a second or whatever it is, it'll, it'll trip itself. So, yeah, you can protect your product better, you can test it better, and it puts out really clean power. I think it's 0.5% THD, which is pretty darn good for an AC power source. So, very nice. And this thing, okay, it comes with a certificate of calibration. So, and I like how they put it in plastic bags unfolded, because I, I have a little file, a little um, bookshelf up there that I put things like this and manuals. Um, now, I didn't get a manual, which is kind of funny. So, I don't think I misplaced it, but I, I opened the box a couple days ago. I was so excited. Uh, but, yeah, I don't think I saw the manual. So, I think, you know, but generally I just put them on the shelf anyway. And I just keep them and I put them on my iPad or whatever and I read them there. So, uh, you know, so it's kind of saving trees by not putting manuals with everything, I guess. Oh, you know what? Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, guys, is this packaging. This came, this guy came in three boxes. A really big, gigantic, like cartoonic box that was too big for my bench. And then inside that, it came in a box. And then inside that, there was a box. So, but the other two boxes, it, they, they were small in comparison to that one, big one. But they were still... When I put it on the bench, I was going to do a box opening, but the box was gigantic. Sitting on its side, it was like this tall. Well, I'll show you how tall it was. So, 
And by the way, it's wrapped in this really dense uh, poly foam. But yeah, so the box is like that big. And this makes it look smaller, but I'm telling you, when this is squeezed in those, you know, like I said, it was a box in a box. So, and then those two boxes in a big box. So it's packed super safe, but this is that really dense foam. And so it was squished in that, uh, well, first of all, it was in this anti-static bag, okay? And then, it, you know, that bag and everything was stuffed, squished down inside that cavity. So uh, this one was easier to pull off, but it was, it, it, yeah, I had to tug on it to get it out of there. So uh, I just decided to save you from torturing you to watch me unpackage it on all those boxes. So <laughs> give me a thumbs up for saving you on that one. But I did want to show you that this thing is coming very well packaged. So no worries there. Oh, and those two inside boxes, I forgot to check the outside box, but the two inside boxes is a box and a box. They fit snug against each other and each box was double walled. You know what I mean? Double walls of cardboard. So it's like four walls of cardboard. So it's like, man, it's like, it's almost a half inch thick. It's so, so much cardboard. So yeah, they're packaged very well. All right, let's get back on with this, <laughs> I guess. Now it comes with this big, heavy cord. I thought this was gonna be like 16 gauge because it's pretty heavy duty. And I have another one that came with the power source that was like this, but it says three 18 gauge wires, which really surprises me how heavy duty that cord is. And it's about six feet long, a couple meters, I'd say. It also comes with this data cord uh, with a couple of ferrite beads on it. So keep things nice and clean. And here, let me just show you the back. And like I say, it's heavy. I have to put the weight here. I can't remember what the weight is now, but it feels like it's 20 pounds or something. It feels, and it's heavy in the front end. So that's nice. I, I like them when they're, you know, front heavy versus back heavy. But, um, cause you know, sometimes when you stack things like something long like this, if it's back heavy, it wants to pull itself off the, like over the top of another item. Where if it's front heavy and the item it's sitting on isn't as long, it doesn't have a problem. But you know, the feet are back here, so. Ah, it's fine. Anyway. <laughs> so this guy here, the soap box, there's a little connector behind him. So you can hook up an AC power cord and have him come out here and maybe have alligator clips or whatever. So you can hook up a power cord there to power up your devices. And then that way, if if you don't have an AC plug, if you're developing something and you just want little prongs, you can do it that way. But Here's your input power, and it's fuse protected, little box there, a fan, and a USB, RS-232. It's funny how you still find those, the serial ports like that, LAN connection, and a trigger output. I'm not sure. I think this syncs. I think it has several functions, but, you know, like I said, when you're sweeping and doing all that, if you want to sync it up to some other device, you know, you can do something like that. Oh man, that's a beast. So it has the handles here that you pull out and you can lift it up. Oops, I don't want to smash my scope back there. Um, iTech. So, and it has a plug that'll take a bunch of different types of receptacles. So this form factor, like this one, this one, the, uh, the Keith B over there, the, you know, all that stuff, that old Roden Schwartz, the HP that's been around forever. That This form factor has been around for ages. And these springs are pretty strong. So a lot of times you'll find them a lot easier to pull out. If they're too easy, that's not good. But these are pretty darn strong. So that's good. It'll stay in place. So anyway, uh, that's kind of the way you can set it up on your bench. I'm going to drop down like this because I'm going to show you... I'm gonna, yeah, so when you pull this out, they're pretty strong springs, so you gotta drop it down like that. Now, here, let me get this situated here. I'm gonna plug this power in. All right, so I got the power plugged in, and uh, let me turn on the display. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't. You know what? It does a self-check and comes on. It has these VFD displays. Maybe you can see this one. These VFDs, I think that 
I'll have to check to see if you can adjust the brightness. I think you can. You can go into configuration, I think. I'll check that out. In this video, I'm going to keep it nice and short. I'm just going to show you a quickie um, what this thing can do and show you the display real quick. But these VFD displays, variable, or what are they called? Um, it's a vacuum frequency display. I think is what it's called. It's been around forever. It's kind of an old, well, you know, they've been around for a long time. And then they kind of went away with LCD displays taking over. But the nice thing about these VFD displays is they're very bright. You can see them, no problem. You don't have to be at a certain angle. I mean, they're just bright displays. So they're really nice. It might be hard for you to see that one over there. Um, like this one's a little dimmer. The IT goes a little bit dimmer. Matrix seems to make theirs a little bit brighter. But I have not tried to set reset the display on this one. So I'm, I'm imagining in the configuration, that's where you would go to set the current limit, that peak current, you know, the RMS current limit and the peak current limit. That's where you go set that thing up in the config. In the next video where we, where we run through some tests, We'll, we'll look at that stuff, okay? But let me just show you this real quick. I'm, okay, I'm going to put this amplifier up here. It's that Class A amplifier. Okay. And we'll plug this guy in. Okay. And then once you plug it in, I'll bring the camera over to show you this. But you just, you know, it says 120 right now, but you go 120 and then... Enter. So the little cursor's set up on voltage. Now if I hit current, or I mean frequency, it comes over here and flashes the frequency. I'm going to go 60 hertz. It's on 50 right now. Okay, that's 60 hertz. So I could go back to voltage and reset that. Okay, so you can set those things up. It's going to display power factor and current. And when I turn it on, those things will come up. I'm going to Bring the camera over and show you that, okay? But what I'm going to do is hit this on-off button, and it turns things on. Oops, sorry. I didn't have the power supply turned on. So it's telling me power factor is 0 0.76, current's 0 0.86, and it's 80 watts. And then I can hit the select button, and it'll toggle through. And it says 112 VA, and... 81 watts so it kind of oh and then over here it gives you um is that 2.4 amps peak okay so that's pretty interesting right 0.78 amps but 0.24 amps peak that's really cool that's showing these low frequency switchers those diodes commutating take some pretty high peak currents like three basically three times higher than the rms current all right, so let me bring the camera over and show you this, okay? All right, guys, so I'm going to hit the on-off switch so you can watch. Right now, it's just saying 120 volts, 60 hertz. So I'll hit the on-off. Lights came on, uh, 95 watts, 0.7 power factor, and 1.18 amps. If I hit the select mode here, it'll show 144 VA. And it shows 3.16 amps peak. And then there we are, 104 watts and 1.2 amps. So yeah, now it went up a little bit. It's almost like it warmed up and now it's taking a little bit more current. That's interesting. It is class A and it does get pretty warm as it's powered. So yeah, that's interesting. So that's the kind of stuff you can learn by being able to see the power power quality instruments all the time because you can see that stuff happening. Yeah, so, you know, it's nice to be able to see that, that kind of stuff happening because um, as you're testing, you may not realize, like, I didn't realize it did that. So, yeah, that was kind of cool. So now it's running at 1.2 amps and go back to the select button. 3.17 amps peak. 143 VA. I'm sorry, excuse me for hand holding. All right, guys, so what do you think? This is going to be fun. I'm going to run some tests with this in the next video, and we'll kind of take it through some of the tests, and I'll show you what it can do. But I'm really excited about this, 
And like I said, I think it's, you know, getting back to the irony of the whole thing, uh, that B&K, B&K has something that looks identical to this for about, not quite $1,100 more, but a lot more expensive. And it's going to take the place of that B&K. <laughs> I'm going to keep this Volt box around because it'll go up to 10 amps output. Oh, by the way, this is up good for up to 300 VA. So if the power factor is 1, 300 watts. So it uh, doesn't seem like a lot, but it'll handle a lot of things. And this, it'll, yeah, I think it handles more than this guy would do. But this one right here can do 10 amps output. So, you know, that's like 1200 watts or something. So that's pretty powerful. But then again, it can't do all the other cool stuff. So, yeah, it's neat to be able to read the power quality stuff, you know, as you're testing. And, yeah, it's just, I think it's just cool to be able to do all that stuff and, and see, you know, how this, you know, the peak currents versus the RMS current. It's just neat. It's like a power quality tool as well as a testing tool and a protection tool because it can protect, say, audio amplifier that I'm building, like this audio amplifier. The first time I powered up, I was kind of nervous. You know, you're bringing up the very act nice and slow, but I can't watch the current on that because it doesn't have a current meter. On this one, I can switch between current and voltage. And so I can start off using that one. And when I feel more confident, then I can go use this guy. Uh, otherwise, when I'm turning up the thing on that, I'm listening to see if I hear like current buzzing, like a lot of current. But this is going to simplify life and make things safer and better. So, two thumbs up to iTech. Thank you so much for sending this out. Uh, for a power guy, yeah, I'm in heaven. Love it. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. So, um, Hey, two thumbs up to my patrons as always. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month down below. And you can hit that super thank you button down there. Uh, right where you can help the channel for free by uh, giving the old thumbs up. You know, But that super thank you is a way to give a one-time you know, donation. Like buy me a cup of coffee, a beer for a rant video, <laughs> something like that. Uh, yeah, so, oh, and two thumbs up to my members of my channel. I think I'm five members still, and thanks for hanging in there, and two thumbs up to my team member, the team member, yeah, that guy, yeah, thank you so much, and appreciate all you guys watching, use the links down below, uh, you know, some of the links have discount codes, so you get a discount, and yeah, and otherwise, it doesn't cost you anything extra, and it supports the channel, so appreciate it, thanks for watching, and yeah, look forward to the next video with this guy.